James Evan Pilato, folks, MediaMonarchy.com on the Bob Tuscan Show. Always great to have you, James. How are you? Doing well, man. Thanks for having me back. Well, thank you. Let's jump right into it. What do you want to start with? Holy Hexes, Food World Order? Where do you want to go? You know, what almost seems most appropriate is the news that broke yesterday about the Netflix price hikes. I know that uh, may people not... People are pissed they, about that, man. They really are. And, you know, and I don't want to come right out and say, oh, that's the most important thing in the world right now. But No, it's, it's not important. In fact, uh, it's only relevant because you recently started a project along with uh, Tragedy and Hope called Navigating Netflix, right? That's right. NavigatingNetflix.com. And the pilot episode is up, and it's called The Experiment. And it's a film that gets into, and it's a dramatization of the Stanford prison experiment, the infamous 1971 experiment that had guys playing the roles of guards and playing the roles of the jailers. And our second episode is in the can and coming soon to be published on NavigatingNetflix.com, and it's going to be Idiocracy, the Mike Judge 2006 yes. film, which is, you know, on watching it more for, <laughs> for the episode it's like, this is, you know, there's so much going on in there. So th it seems like a timely thing that, you know, to mention navigatingnetflix.com. And it's they're essentially jacking up the prices 60%. And I guess we shouldn't be surprised. And James Corbin and I did discuss this earlier today on the also soon to be published 80th episode of New World Next Week. And, you know, in a way it shouldn't be surprising because their name isn't, you know, Mail flicks. It's Netflix. I think they never exactly, you know, I think the idea of doing it streaming was always kind of the business idea in the first place. And should we also be surprised? Maybe it's just the thing of, you know, getting people hooked on something like some type of tech drug and then jacking up the prices on us once well, we're all, all of addicted. these companies are, are known for the bait and switch. Mm -hmm. And and that's what that was. It, it was a bait and switch. So it it sucks because I, you know, I am and have been a fan of Netflix and, and all the amazing things that are out there. Because I know, be, you know, being a, a movie buff for a long time and not ever being able to see so many films that only once, you know, even DVDs started to happen, did things start to appear that, you know, were never really accessible, probably never put on VHS. So growing up in a small southern West Virginia town, you know, pre-internet having all these things now it's it's you know oh i always wanted to see that movie i've always heard that was you know one of the greatest you know films ever made but it was maybe foreign or from the 40s or god forbid you know black and white or something so it's been an amazing amazing resource so i guess the question now is what exactly are people going to do what do you think well i i think um and this is um off the record, I guess. That's, well, <laughs> it can't be off the record because I'm on the air. Well, I, I think BitTorrent's going to you know, continue to, uh -huh. to be the thing. I, I think streaming, you know, uh, embedded streaming, um, where you know, these, they do this. Uh, well, they're trying to make it a crime, and, and we can talk about that uh -huh. perhaps. But I, I think uh, unless they come after that and, and do indeed make it a crime, I, I think that's what's going to be the release valve to this. And what sucks is that... The Netflix uh, free streaming, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, there are some good quality choices on there, and, and it is a, a fairly large selection. House of Numbers, for instance, mm -hmm. for instance, a documentary that we've uh, mentioned in the first segment of tonight's mm -hmm. show and we'll talk about next hour. It's on there, and, and a lot of obscure good documentaries and movies are on there. But some of them aren't, and and what this is going to do, it's gonna, it's going to make people lazy. It's it's you know, it, who wants to pay more money when you can just stay within their realm of content, uh -huh. and and that's another form of programming. It's just like AOL back in the day. You know, people stayed in that AOL box, and I hope this doesn't, um, you know lead to people staying within the Netflix box. I'm sure they already do to a certain extent oh, yeah. and only go to the what's most popular or whatever. Um, so anyways, I, I, as far as what they're going to do though, James, I don't know. I, I think that BitTorrent and streaming and, and those outlets are going to continue. It's interesting because on maybe so many levels, you almost, I wonder, it's like maybe the powers that be are actually helping to speed along the creation of some type of new, you know, counterculture or subculture or whatever you want to call it that we all basically are going to use 
whether or not it's the brand names of things like Kickstarter or Netflix or any of these kind of new 21st century tools, but also back to growing our own food. I mean, are they basically pushing us to a point where it's like, okay, how about I don't subscribe to the New York Times and I don't subscribe to Netflix and I don't pay for you to lie to me. I pay my friends who provide me news and then I'm able to trade with my other friends over here who make food and these other guys here, they love to play music and they'll play music for you for, you know, maybe in a way this is all positive and they're just hastening the creation of, of sort of new community. Or maybe they're just helping to kill the internet and, and there's all sorts of hacking stories going on. Absolutely. And I, I guess perhaps that's a, a good segue to talking about some of that. What do you think? Definitely. And, you know, the way I, I pretty much run MediaMonarchy.com by myself, so I'm not able to constantly post things. What I end up doing is kind of collecting headlines and links through the day or so or through the days and put them in their folders and then basically post them together as a list to just sort of, okay, here's a bunch of, you know, hacking related news. Here's a bunch of, you know, biological or environment news or any of those kind of categories that I cover, you know, on all the sites and, and ways. So I have a bunch of, of things yet to be posted to cyberspacewar.com. And that's, you know, I think even on the front of Google News just a little bit ago is, you know, will this phone hacking scandal be Rupert Murdoch's Watergate? And, you know, shares dropping and all these things moving. I saw something about a hack of Booz Allen Hamilton, one of our favorite private military industrial complex contractors. They got hacked. Monsanto has been hacked. It's fascinating to me because when we saw these hacks, and that's, I think, what's always kind of raised our eyebrows, whether it was LulzSec or, or WikiLeaks and some of these things. It's like, wow, their hacks and their works sure doesn't seem to benefit people. It sure only seems to play into the hands of the agenda and the military-industrial complex. Sure. And all. But now we have it where it's like, okay, maybe now something's happening if we're hacking Monsanto and Booz Allen Hamilton and we yeah, could maybe see... Yeah, but you see... know, somebody, somebody said to me, James, the other day... I'm being positive, man. <laughs> you know, they said to me, well, what is hacking Monsanto's website going to do? You know, do you think that really is going to halt their business? It's not like they rely on the per website. se on their website. So I don't know. I and and then they also attacked. I don't know if you saw this. The city of or, of Orlando's website in response to arresting people feeding the hungry down there. Oh. And uh, all that did was cause the police to have more threats against them to continue to invade our privacy. So yeah, it, you have to wonder what this is. There the problem reaction solution mm -hmm. dialectic taking place uh and it's it seems to me like eh it, it, it's a very big possibility. I mean, if they'll go to great lengths like they did on 9/11, it would not surprise me at all that they would do petty things like this via internet trolls mm -hmm. and hackers. And I think, you know, folks have been trying to sound the alarm for a long, you know, or for at least the last few years about this sort of I-9-11. And they're just waiting with the, an I patriot Act that's already sort of prepared and they're waiting for it. Yeah. And you mentioned there, you know, and I, I think saw headlines earlier today about, you know, we need to build a new Internet that has better cybersecurity. Yeah, security. a new Internet so they can continue to enslave us. Hold that thought. We'll be right back, James. <laughs> 